The next morning, Yan was back at the Place Royale, eager to tell Sido of her unexpected good fortune. He took up his position as before, not wanting to draw attention to himself. By half past one, he had to acknowledge that something was wrong, and the unpleasant image of Mr. Tull came back to haunt him. He moved nearer to the door, hoping beyond hope that Sido would still come down. As he leaned against the wall, he could hear the women nearby gossiping. That poor girl! There she was trying to stop him from shouting and he kicked her in front of everybody. Most probably that's how she got that limp in the first place. Well, he's not right in the head, is he? said her friend. You could see that. Mad like a lot of them. Too much in breeding, I say. That's what's wrong with all these stinking aristocrats. The women chuckled. He was a sight for sore eyes, wasn't he? Did you notice that one side of his powdered hair was stuck to his head, as if he'd been sleeping on it? Shouting at the top of his voice that the devil was coming to get him. I thought the National Guard would come and arrest him, the noise he was making. It took two strong men to get him into that carriage, didn't it? You had to feel sorry for the girl, though. She was in tears by the time they took off. Yan had heard enough. A wave of panic flooded through. He should have got her out when he had the chance. Now he hated to think of the danger she was in. By the time Yan returned to the Theatre of Liberty, it was early evening. In Monsieur Ola's office, Tetu was in the middle of a terrible argument with the theatre manager. Didier, his great arms folded across his chest, stood watching his boss and the dwarf bellow at each other. He is here to protect me, not to run errands for you, Monsieur Ola was shouting. You don't need protection, you're not in any danger. We, on the other hand, need vital information. Stop it, shouted Yan. They turned to look at him. Sido's gone. Tull came last night. She's left with the Marquis. Well, that was fast, said Tattoo out of breath. With luck, she'll be well on her way to England by now. No, something's wrong. When the carriage came last night, the Marquis kept screaming and wouldn't get in. A crowd gathered and he kicked Sido in front of him and insulted them all. If he was making that much of a din, then their attempt to escape must have been obvious, said Tattoo. Why wasn't he arrested? The implication of Tattoo's question suddenly hit them all like a hammer blow. Tattoo rolled down his shirt sleeves and pulled at his jacket. All notion of fighting gone. The scoundrel, he said. We need to make immediate inquiries about Tull. I take it you don't mind if I use Didier? Of course not. Did I ever say I did? said Monsieur Ola. But Didier, for pity's sake, go down to wardrobe and get a hat that fits. Tattoo and Didier set off towards the cafes on the Rue du Temple. Yann decided to take the small streets that led off the Rue des Francs Bourgeois in search of anyone who had information that might lead him to Tull. It was well past midnight when he gave up. By then, the streets were deserted. Suddenly an idea came to him. Where in the city, he wondered, was a cafe that sold beer to tempt an Englishman? Of course! The cafe in the Palais Royal! By the time he arrived, most of the clientele were emptying lazily out onto the street. The barman looked up when he saw Yan enter. We're closed, citizen. I haven't come for a drink. I'm looking for an Englishman by the name of Tull. Does he come in here? What's that to you? said the barman, putting down the glass he was rubbing with the dirty cloth. I need to speak to him, said Yan. It's urgent. The barman grabbed him by the lapels of his sky-blue coat. Beat it. You wouldn't want me spoiling those good looks of yours, would you? He let him go. Yan felt a surge of ice-cold fury. He lifted his head slowly to see threads of light coming from everything and everyone in the cafe. Yan stood there like a puppet master, pulling at the threads, so that first one glass and then another fell, smashing all round the startled barman, who stood petrified as he watched the young man orchestrating objects to move at his will. 
The last customers ran from the cafe as chairs went flying across the room. Yan turned back to the barman. Let me ask you again. Does a Mr. Tull drink here? Oh, yes, yes, said the barman anxiously. And do you know who he works for? The barman beckoned him closer. You promise you won't say anything? I'm a dead man if you do.